All righty, righty, righty. There we go. Whoo! Pardon me, kitty. Pardon me. Oh, is it? Have a seat here. Are we live? Hell oh, yeah, we're live. Oh my goodness. We thought we were going to get some rain for a minute there earlier today. The clouds are building up over there up to the north, moving from the north to the south. It's always a good sign. Little gray bottoms, really tall cumulonimbus clouds, and we had some thunder going on. Uh, that, you know, that thunder you get whenever the lightning jumps from one cloud to the other. It's kind of interesting how that works, actually. It's, as, as the cloud is making its way, it's got water vapors rising and condensing. They fall down, and then they get blown back up. Every time the water droplets move up and down within one of these big, tall clouds, it accumulates more negative ions on the underside of the cloud from the top of the cloud. So the top of the cloud becomes positively charged, and the bottom of the cloud becomes negatively, negatively charged. And if a, a leader can be found between the negatively charged underside of the cloud and the ground, you'd get lightning from you know sky to ground lightning. But uh, sometimes you just don't have those circumstances. The ground is too negatively charged <laughs> for uh, lightning to make a path from the ground to the bottom of the cloud. So lightning will arc from the bottom of one cloud to the top of another cloud. It's kind of cool. Anyway, who do we have here today? We've got uh, we got Brian Brian Perindi. We got Recyclable Homestead. We got John Pumphrey and Eric Hill all saying hello, hello, and hi, 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 everybody. So uh, today we're going to make some drugs. <laughs> not not the kind of drugs that you that, that you that you take because you want to have a a good time or see pretty colors, but the kind of drugs that you might might make to uh, alleviate. Uh, some common some common symptoms hmm. before we get started of course i'm required to make a disclaimer i'm not a licensed physician and anything that i say on the topic of uh of herbs and herbal remedies should be uh considered entertainment and uh and um anecdotal and not to be construed as medical advice um there now i'm I've said that bit, and I don't have to worry about about the uh, the people with guns coming and making a nuisance of themselves. What is that noise? Oh, 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 oh. neighbors processing uh, processing gourds. I'm not the only one growing the the little birdhouse gourd. All right, so. Let me get started here. Um, you guys know about medications and where they came from, right? I'm pretty sure you do. All right. So there are these things out there in the world that we call plants. They produce chemicals. Those chemicals have effects on the human body. Occasionally, a scientist will be able to figure out what combination of chemicals it was in the plant that had the effect that, that they were looking for and are able to synthesize that in the laboratory. And then we've got the ability to make a patent medication, medication that you actually can get a patent for. Of course, herbs themselves, since they're natural products, can't be patented, which is one of the reasons why you don't see a whole lot of uh, major pharmaceutical companies pushing herbs on the populace and saying, here, use this herb, because if you use this herb, then you don't really need them to do anything. So what we're going to be working on today is an anti-inflammatory preparation inside uh, gel capsules. I have gel capsules here. And of course, this device here is a doctor capsule, 100 capsule gelatin capsule maker. We have our capsule separated into halves. We got the bottom halves here in this container and the top halves here in this container right here. And we'll be putting them into the little holes designated for the tops and the bottoms when the time comes around. I've taken the advantage or the opportunity, I should say, of going ahead and putting the capsules in the bottom plate here. I don't know if you can see them or not. Hold them up to the camera line. You see the little clear things there. Those are the, the capsules. They're already positioned in the bottom plate, and I've got this little frame that we put around that that keeps the powders when we start trying to fill the capsules. We keep the powders from wandering off too far. Let's see what's going on. We got Sassafras Red here. He is cleaning herbs for uh, winter medicine. That's awesome. Mary is here. She's buffering. We got Suzanne Stack and Amy from Craze Family Homes. Hi, Amy. 
is here with some crying shame cam over here and said it's not buffering where she's at. Well, Mary's on her phone and she's probably out in the middle of nowhere because she's out in the truck today. Of course, Mary likes to likes to order some stuff from, from Amazon from time to time. She ordered some stuff up for, for, for us to look at today. Well, I don't know if she ordered it up for us to look at today, but she ordered some stuff up. And we'll be having a look at that. Some of it is relevant to uh, to uh, to making drugs. <laughs> the drugs that we're working on are, are not are not for drugs per se, but more of a uh, herbal remedy for inflammation. You see, I I started to feel the effects of this uh, tropical depression a couple of days ago, and my arthritis in my right hip started acting up. As it acted up, it inflamed the tissue surrounding the ball joint in the right hip, and since the sciatic nerves pass right through that area, it started pinching my sciatic nerve and made it almost impossible for me to walk. So I knew I had to act quickly and reduce the inflammation, and I found something a while back whenever I tore the tendons in my shoulder that did a really good, great job of reducing inflammation. I picked it up at the, uh, the GNC store. It was a combination of turmeric and Boswellia serrata. Boswellia serrata is the Indian frankincense. It's a tree. It's the gum from a tree. Get down, kitty. What do you think I'm doing something here for you? Your food is over there. Your, your food is over there. Sorry. What? Attention starved cats, I swear. All right. So I tried this this particular medicine we got at GNC. It cost $30, $45, something like that for a one-month supply. It worked like a charm. It knocked the inflammation out. The pain went away. I got range of motion back in my arm, and I'm, I still can't pick up large, heavy objects with my left arm anymore, but I can actually do this with it now. It's great. Um, but, of course, that's really expensive, and I got to thinking, you know, I could probably get the ingredients to make this myself, and I, I wouldn't be paying anywhere near as much. So we ordered up the powdered turmeric. I'm also growing turmeric root as well. We have powdered turmeric to, to, to make this with. I got Boswellia extract. This is the, the resin, the gum of the of the Boswellia serrata, Indian frankincense. Right there. And we got a few other things to go into this into this mixture. Each one has its own particular um, use medicinally speaking. This is all anecdotal information gleaned from reading medical journals at probably just should be taken with a grain of salt. Don't think of it as medical advice because I'm not a licensed physician. Got it? All right. Let me see. Mary says she's in a one bar area. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kitty needs his medicine. Give him the... I don't have any. I don't have any cat now. He just wants dinner. Or he just wants... No, not dinner. We've had dinner. He just wants attention. He actually probably wants me to get rid of that uh, of that sticker in his tail that you see it's got stuff hanging off of it. I will later. I'm gonna have to get the scissors out and cut your fur off. I'm I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut it out. It's stuck in there too good. Well, don't whine at me. I'm not the one to go. Look, we've got all of this space here. I've gotten rid of the stickers. You have to go wandering through the stickers. It's your own dang fault. I don't want to hear it. Anyway, <laughs> so here we go. Uh, active ingredients allegedly in turmeric, anti-inflammatory, uh, blood pressure reducer, a few other fun things. Of course, the Indian frankincense also anti-inflammatory. Let's go ahead and start measuring some stuff out. I've got my mortar and pestle here because some of the ingredients are still a little bit, um, they're still a little bit crunchy. Let me see. I should have a have a spoon. Yes, I do. Okay. And, uh, the turmeric is well ground enough, but the the frankincense is not really all that well ground. So, fun times. No anti caking agent, so it clumps a bit. We're just gonna put in two tablespoons. I know, just like cooking, huh? of Indian frankincense, and we're just going to run it in the pestle for a minute to make sure that the clumps are broken up. So from what I've discovered, 
and you can probably plainly see if you're going to go out and get a mortar and pestle to be making your own preparations at home get a large one because see this is just two tablespoons worth of material it's got it about as full as i can work it with just two tablespoons worth of material All right. I have a little bit of material that I made up earlier. That's in this container here. We're just going to be mixing. Of course, if you're using a, a, a pill maker like this one, you can always do your ingredients one at a time. If you like, there's no rule that says that you have to mix them all together before. It's just, since I've made this particular preparation a time or two, I already know what proportions I'm going to use. And I know what needs to be ground up and what doesn't. Our first two ingredients, of course, are the turmeric root and Indian frankincense. And you'll find turmeric used a lot in Indian food. As a matter of fact, if you're, if you like curry, <laughs> several of the ingredients that you can use for anti-inflammatories are, are found in, in curry, but one cannot go around eating curry six days or six times a day, seven days a week. Well, I suppose you could. If you really, really, really like to curry. All right. First two ingredients, those are taken care of. Now, for people that have been doing a lot of reading in medical journals and following about following along about the the benefits of turmeric, you'll know that it contains a, a compound called curcumin. Curcumin is the is the ingredient that has the effect of reducing inflammation. But in order for it to work properly, you need to add another ingredient. And that would be, well, you guessed it, that's black pepper. You could use black pepper, which is Piper nigrum, or you could use its cousin, Piper longum. I am not kidding. That's what they call it, Piper longum or long pepper. Long pepper, much like black pepper, grows in zone 10 and further south, 10A, you can, you can grow hyper long them. So either one of them, I can't really grow my own here. If we had a loss of supply chain, then I'd have to barter for it from somebody that can produce it, much like salt. I have to be able to get salt from somebody that can that can produce it because we don't have it here. All right. So this formulation is two tables, two tablespoons each of the Boswellia serrata and turmeric, one tablespoon of black pepper. It's almost like we're cooking. Actually, it doesn't smell too bad. Black pepper contains a chemical compound called piperine. Piperine is an anti-inflammatory as well. In addition to being a cofactor working with the turmeric, with the uh, curcumin and the turmeric, piperine helps aid in inflammation on its own. So we have two other, well, two ingredients here working on inflammation as well as the anti-inflammatory from the uh, Indian frankincense. Piperine also... Um, helps to lower blood pressure, allegedly, allegedly. Remember, this is all alleged, all alleged. <laughs> and acts as a blood thinning agent, so it can help aid in circulation. Circulation is important whenever you're recovering from injuries. The faster you can get your blood moving to and from the affected areas, the quicker you can heal. Imagine it like you're, you're going to go build a house on the top of the hill and it's gonna take 10,000 bricks to build that house and you've got to make carry those bricks up the hill and you can only carry them up a few bricks at a time 10 bricks at a time the quicker you can make that trip up and down the hill the quicker the house gets built or alternatively you could look at it a different way the more bricks you can carry each trip the faster the house gets built either way the more blood flow that you get going to uh, going to injured areas the faster your injuries are going to recover that's that's the the point we're trying to get at uh, you might wonder why why uh, the, the Veteran Administration 
doctors might uh, be prescribing Viagra as, as a therapeutic drug. It actually does have a therapeutic purpose. It's to increase and enhance blood flow so we accelerate healing. And now you know the rest of the story. Okay. Aside from piperine and the black pepper, we've got a couple other components we're going to use. This is cassia cinnamon. Cassia cinnamon usually comes from China. Not to be confused with Ceylon cinnamon, which comes from Sri Lanka. There are two different plants with a couple of different profiles for hmm, their herbal use and flavor profiles. All right, so cinnamon is another anti-inflammatory. So we've got one, two, three, four different anti-inflammatories now. It also acts as a blood thinning agent. It contains a small amount of a chemical compound called Kumarin. Kumarin, as many of you may know from having a look at the ingredients on your pill bottles, Kumarin is the ingredient found in the very popular blood thinner called Warfarin. In large quantities, it's also the popular ingredient in rat poison, so don't take too much of it, people. The combination of piperine and the Kumarin in the cinnamon, both being blood thinning agents, means, for you smart people, means that if you are already on aspirin therapy, if you are already taking blood thinners, and probably if you're taking blood pressure medication, um, you should ver think very seriously before considering taking this particular preparation. The synergistic compounds of all of those blood thinners and blood pressure reducers could cause you to have an episode. I believe the, the common boilerplate is, please consult with your physician before taking this or any other herbal product. All right. But now you know why. All right. So we've got turmeric. We've got boswellia serrata. We've got black pepper. We have cinnamon. And I've got one more herb to add in. Before I add that in, I'm going to go check our, our, our comments and see what you guys have been up to. Isn't this a pretty looking flower? This is one of the flowers from the red canna lily. Very, very pretty. They're all blooming right now. They're still blooming right now. So we actually have some flowers out there, some color in this this uh, tail end of summer, beginning of fall. I would love to have a lot more flowers blooming at this time of year, but right now it's these, the candle lilies. I've discovered that the hummingbirds love these. They, they like these and they like the, uh, the little cypress vine, which is next to the camera and you can't see it. <laughs> but I've got a video coming out here on Friday where I will show you cypress vine and a few of its close relatives, which we all have growing around here. And I'll show you some uh, some harvesting of some of the stuff that we've got over here behind me. Anyway, let's put this to the side and talk about this herb right here. Now, this herb, this herb is also Chinese in origin. And in, in, in Chinese medicine, this we refer to as yin yang ho. And I'm probably mispronouncing that entirely. So maybe people that actually speak fluent Chinese can always correct me. Um, Bishop's cap is another common name for it. The... The Latin binomial is um, epimedium. Is it epimedium? Yeah, epimedium brevicornum. Epimedium brevicornum. This one is uh, also an anti inflammatory and also works to enhance blood flow by stimulating the production of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, of course, is that thing that has been in the news a lot uh, with the. Uh, the beet powder supplements that are now all the rage, or at least they were a couple of years ago, for producing nitric oxide, enhancing your blood flow, helping to improve your health and vigor. All right. Because <laughs> it improves blood flow, if you had you know, problems and blood flow was the issue that was giving you those particular problems, this particular herb might be suggested to you by your Chinese medicinal herbal pr practitioner to, to take care of the, the, the male problems. But in all actuality, it doesn't really do anything other than help stimulate blood flow. And so we are going to add this particular herb. There is another popular name for it, but we won't 
mention that because it's somewhat vulgar. Let me see here. How the garden says I've been trying to get long, long pepper plants. That is cool. And you have black pepper. That's nice. Hmm. Very good. Very good point. He, he, uh, out of garden said it also helps with blood sugar levels. Yes, it does. Um, people who are diabetic, having problems with neuropathy, particularly, might be interested in increasing the uh, quantity of black pepper in their diet, simply for helping with uh, helping with those issues. Blood sugar, blood pressure as well. Uh, I think it's both the cinnamon and the. Both the cinnamon and the turmeric and the black pepper all have been have been linked to decreases in blood pressure. So blood pressure, blood circulation, and anti-inflammatory. We've got five ingredients all in here now. Five different ingredients mixed together right here. And since I don't have anything else to stir with, I'm just going to use the stem <laughs> of this can of lily and follow our comments and see what's going on here. Green light, be right back. Oh, let's see. <laughs> oh, I missed a whole bunch of stuff. All right. It's crying shame is cooking dinner. Jasper's Red says frankincense makes a great tea. You know, I've never had it in tea. Yeah. Um, yeah, the sticker hurts. The kitty's got a sticker in his tail. Sasper Shred says, freezing the frankincense helps. Also, freezing the mortar and pestle helps. Wow. Mary says, we need we need some new, uh, new emojis. You know, actually, we've got the ability to make three... I know, three. Three new emojis. And I need to come up with what those are and put those out there for you. All right. Well, right now, all I'm doing is just getting our getting our mix mixed up really, really good. Because we want to have as much to a uniform dose in each capsule as possible. Of course, you could always make a capsule of each, but I don't think you, me, or anyone else really wants to take five separate gel caps just to get rid of a little bit of arthritis, inflammation, and pain. Actually, it's amazing how much pain you get rid of. Whenever you eliminate the, the cause of the pain, the pain goes away. And for a lot of us, most of the pain that we're suffering is simply caused by inflammation. It's really quite shocking. You get rid of the inflammation, the pain just goes away. Although black pepper and cinnamon have also has been suggested that they help with pain relief. How much of that is actually anesthetic or analgesic and how much of it is simply just eliminating the source of the pain, the inflammation, I'm not really sure. All right, so we're ready to start filling here. I brought out my, my digital scales, not because I'm actually going to use them. I just brought them out to, uh, to serve as a as a, as, a, as a set dressing. <laughs> um, I'm planning on collecting seeds from from these guys and making them available on the website for people that would like to to sprout and grow cannas from seed. Otherwise, you can always wait until I, I pull up the the roots and divide the roots, and I, I can I can send roots out to people as well. It may be a couple of years before I, I start selling. The, the, the roots of the canna simply because right now I'm expanding my own supply of them in the garden um, but yeah digital scales lots of fun you can always measure out your ingredients by weight instead of volume that would probably be the better way to get consistently uh, accurate results all right so here we go we've got our mixture Blend it together, and we'll just dump it out. Dump it out, I say, over the plate where we have already put the capsules. 
and then you'll love this. I just use this nifty little spatula to work it back and forth until the capsules are filled. Isn't that something? on this side so whenever I've got excess and I've got excess I can just scrape that off and back out into the container with the rest of my mix there we go let's take this off for a moment So now we have this item here, which is the tamper, which we take and we just position over those pills and we press down. And this will compact all the powder in the pills. All right, so the mixture that we made up today is a mixture of five different ingredients. All of them are anti-inflammatory. We've got turmeric, we've got the Zoelia serrata, which is Indian frankincense. We've got black pepper, which contains piperin. We've got cassia cinnamon, and we've got bishop's cap or yin yang ho, Chinese medicine. <laughs> All five of these have their, have their own separate pathway to reducing inflammation. So working together, the, each of them tackle the product problem from a different angle. This produces a synergistic effect, meaning it's more likely that this combination of different herbs will have the desired effect of actually reducing your inflammation. Of course, if you like, you can always go to the grocery store and buy non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs for short, at the suggestion of your physician, of course, which would include things like ibuprofen, which can do nasty things to the linings in your stomach. But hey, you just do what works best for you, I suppose. All right, now that we've got our first round of uh, powder tamped in, we're gonna sprinkle more on. and try to work it in, work it into those holes. Now, anecdotally speaking, it took me about 48 hours from being nearly unable to walk with pain from my pinched sciatic nerve, which is being pinched, due to arthritic inflammation of the ball joint of my right hip. 48 hours from that to being happy-go-lucky without a care in the world. And all it took was a grand total of six capsules. Now, taken two at a time with meals. I'll explain why with meals specifically for this medication and also uh, why in general medications will be prescribed with meals. There is actually a very good reason. Now 
that your licensed physician, if he spend his time studying and not just listening to whatever the pharmacy reps tell him, his licensed physician might actually know what the reason is. <laughs> but he might not. But I'll tell you. All right. You can repeat this cycle a couple of times where you get your powder on, work it in, use the tamper, wash, rinse, repeat. I figure probably about three, three times through is enough. The instructions on the box, if you were to order up one of these Dr. Capsule 100 Capsule Gelton Capsule Fillers, the instructions only mention tamping it once. But you'll find they fill up a lot better if you if you do it at least twice. You can see I still have a lot of space left that needs to be filled. There we go. All right, so what's going on here? Uh, let's see. Suzanne Stack is saying, with a copy or spice grinder work, I bought one to powder my herbs. Oh, yeah. Not anything you can use to, 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 to grind grind any solid into a fine powder will work. I just happen to have a mortar and pestle from, from a while back whenever I was making small batches, and I thought that would be, that would be appropriate, and then I discovered it's just way too small. But, you know... Whenever I'm taking um, taking my, my salt block salt and grinding that up and make turning it into popcorn salt, I use a I use a coffee an electric coffee grinder. It gets a fine just as fine as any powder you could want. Let's see. Sasquatch Red is saying no on coffee grinders for resins. Yeah, yeah. If if it's something that's really that's really sticky, the coffee grinder wouldn't work very much or wouldn't work very well. <laughs> Robert says, thumbs up, and this is good dinner and movie for me. <laughs> Teeny Ladybug says, hi. Sean over there at Sastro Thread says he tried the, he tried the curry challenge. Nah, I don't think you'd be able to keep it up every day. All right. Oh, my goodness. I scrolled down way too far. Here we go. John Humphrey says, Spearmint has health benefits and keeps you alert if you don't have coffee. You know, something else keeps you alert if you don't have coffee. There, there is another another ingredient you could add in here as a vasodilator. You might go ahead and add in the, uh, the ECA stack for you meatheads. You already know what that is. Um, Except you, you you leave out the A because you already have you already have anticoagulants in the form of the piperin and the cumarin from the cinnamon and the black pepper. Uh, ECA is ephedra, caffeine, and aspirin. So you mix you mix the ephedra plant, ephedra sinensis, which is also called mahong in Chinese medicine. Or you could use uh, the, the North American native, Ephedra viridian. It grows in the desert areas out west of here. Also commonly known as Mormon tea or joint fern. Either one of those would work just as well. Mix that along with caffeine and aspirin for a thermogenic benefit. Vasodilation and lots and lots of energy. There was some concern a while back that uh, people were getting extracts of the ephedra plant. So the extracts were almost pure ephedrine. Not pseudoephedrine, which would be the, the, the artificially made chemical that you find in Sudafed. 
but ephedrine, the actual made by nature chemical compound in the plant. Anytime you start getting extracts of anything, uh, you start running into trouble. I'm pretty sure a, a tea made out of the leaves or possibly the buds of the of the, the somniferum poppy plant are fairly innocuous and not likely to cause anybody to, a sudden overdose or kill them. But you start concentrating the, the extract from those leaves and eventually you get to a, a compound that can be lethal with just a, a tiny little dose of it. We're, we're talking about uh, the, the poppy plant. This is the, this is the source of First opium, then codeine, then with further refinement, you've got uh, heroin and morphine. Further and further you take it away from nature, the more dangerous it becomes. I don't think anybody is likely to, uh, to bleed themselves out by eating some cinnamon. But if you take a cinnamon extract and concentrate the Camarin, then you might run into a problem. All right, there we go. Let me just get the excess off the plate here. Okay, I promised I would mention why it was that certain medications have to be taken with food. Guys, ready? All right. So, you may be familiar with dissolving things. If you ever taken salt or sugar and you dissolved it into water, you could see a saline solution, or maybe you're making Kool Aid or iced tea or something like that. Salt and sugar are soluble; they can dissolve in water. Fairly self-explanatory. But not everything is soluble in water. Some things have to be dissolved in oil. Or, um, or something equivalent. The curcumin in turmeric is oil soluble, so it has to be taken with something that has oil in it, so it can be absorbed. Hence, take with meal. All right, we've got the lower halves of the pills full right there. Now we got to do something with the upper halves. Here I've got plate number two, and we're going to take a little, little guide here and put that on top. We'll find the short ends of our capsules right here. If for some reason you happen to be shopping for gelatin capsules, you've got one of these contraptions and uh, you're shopping for gelatin, gelatin capsules and you find somebody that has taken the time to package their gelatin capsules with the tops and the bottoms separated, i tell you what, that's a time saver. I don't know why they combine them and put them in the package. You have to separate them anyway. But um, tops and bottoms already separated would be great. All right, so I'm just going to shake some off in here and we're going to just give this a good shake in the hopes that the bottoms of the pills will find the holes that they're supposed to go into and settle down and then we we'll just pour out the, the excess here all right oh that's a top i don't even know what it was doing there all right so now we pull the little director off and we see that we've got no oh, mostly filled there's a couple of spots we need to fill in that one didn't get a, a bottom in it the rest of them did, but some of them are upside down. That happens sometimes. The bottoms are heavier than the, than the, than the open tops, so they should fall the right way most of the time, but sometimes they don't. So you just have to flip them over. Just, just like so. Guys, come out on Wednesday night to watch Jason make drugs. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> All right. And hopefully, I'll have another uh, 
another medicinal component in one of those boxes that Mary sent me. I do eventually want to start producing my own essential oils here. And if I can find good equipment for essential oil extraction that I can buy in bulk, who knows, I might just order up a pallet full of, uh, of distillation kits and pass the savings on to you guys. Just put them up for sale on the website. All right, so now we've got our, our pills here, bottoms up. All loaded up and ready to go. I'm going to cover this up before any critters get to it. Do you guys hear that? I don't know. I can hear him. He's being quiet. There you go. You've got a goldfinch over there behind you in the tree somewhere. I can't make him out. They're skittish little birds. It's about like uh, earlier this year, whenever they kept on telling everybody that we had these indigo buntings that are coming around. They're, they're nesting over there on the other side of the property. Occasionally, I get to see them come by the feeder. Oh, look, there's one right there. And you never get to see it really well. Yeah. Well, hopefully these guys will <laughs> they'll get used to me. Okay. Now. I'm going to put this little part here. You hear that? I don't know if you can hear that bird or not. They're talking about me. <laughs> All right, so we can now turn these over like so. All right. And then we put them here on the top. All right, you ready? This is where the magic happens. We just push down. And that should connect the two halves together and make a completed fill. Move this out of the way. I got a plate to, to drop them on. And here we go. Oh, there's one that didn't make. That does happen from time to time. They don't quite come together. Now, whenever they're here, just like this, it's kind of like looking at a at a beehive and looking at the comb, huh? All right, I got one that didn't that didn't come together right. These, if you give them a little extra push while they're still here. Just push them in a little bit from either side to close them off. It helps keep them from coming separated later on. So just a little extra, a little extra squeeze. Nope, oh, I just dropped it out. A little extra squeeze whenever you're done. Just to make sure that the two halves come together right. And then you can drop the fill out. And it's ready to use. Looks like. All right. Okay. Just pinching these two halves together to make sure. That still doesn't come apart. It's all we're doing. Same thing here. Just like that. Ta da. All done. And we can drop. Our pills right out. And hey, there we go. I've got 99 brand new homemade anti inflammatory pills made with turmeric, Indian frankincense, 
black pepper, cinnamon, and epimedium brevicornum for blood flow, also known as, yeah, that way. <laughs> the combination of these together does anecdotally, <clears throat> allegedly, <laughs> does wonders for inflammation. Knocks it right out of the park, kills the pain right along with it. It's good stuff. And if you can make it for pennies, instead of spending 35 or 40 bucks for a month's supply, all the better. All right, let me, let me take a look, see what's going on with comments here. And we'll get to opening up, up some packages, and I'll tell you about the trick for stopping upper respiratory infections that I had discovered whenever I was very sick one year, many, many moons ago, coughing up blood, no medical insurance, and uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a very interesting time, but I found a solution, and it has worked on every single upper respiratory infection that has been tried on that I have witnessed since then, but don't take my word for it because I'm not a licensed physician. All right, here we go. We've got uh, Aussie Ant, Auntie Nettle, what? Auntie Net from, from good says good day from Australia. All right. Mel, Bacon Leg and Listig at Home says, says, hi, Jason Avers, question mark. <laughs> Hello to everyone in the chat. Let's see. Ta -da. And I scroll down too far. Let me see. I'm just finally catching up with the chat. Um, Mark, did, 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 did you figure out what drugs we were making? We're making anti-inflammatories. That's it. Oh, incidentally, Mark, um, you, you sent me a text message the other day. I'm on the new phone, so I didn't recognize it right away until I went back and I, I double-checked with, with the old phone, and I, I haven't imported the, the, the list of people, the, the contact list yet. And I was like, I know this is either going to be Carl or it's going to be it's going to be Mark or it's going to be somebody I sent the countries to. Um, this year, right now, I have three seedlings. Those are seedlings, not not grafted, not grafted stock, not uh, not um, not clones. So I have three seedlings with Wichita pecan and native genetics intermixed in them. I don't know exactly how good they're going to wind up being. I know they're going to make pecans. They're going to be a little more paper shell, a little more native, or maybe they'll be exactly like their mother and, and just be just like a Wichita. They'll all be good, and they'll all be good for cross-pollination. Um, we'll see if they all three make it until until winter. And two of them are yeah, iffy. And then I've got, I'm going to have a dozen, uh, hopefully, a dozen air layer pecans, and we'll see how those are by the time winter gets here. I'm going to take at least one of them myself and plant it in the backyard. But uh, other than that, those will be up and available. But we'll see whenever fall gets here. How many of them actually make it all the way to fall? Getting slow started. Slow started. We, we will eventually have a plant nursery here. <laughs> We're working on it. All right. So let's see. Uh, the... No, Mel was asking what I'm what I'm chopping. Uh, Suzanne is asking, could we make a sleep aid to take with the anti-inflammatory? Yes, you can. Um, I don't have all the. See, we're having that problem that that, that that was mentioned the other day about it getting darker and darker earlier and earlier. I'm starting to get a grainy black and white picture now. Looking over here. Um, which means I'll either have to start earlier or get some lights and set up some lights out here or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I have right now, I have valerian growing. And I'm trying to get Passiflora incarnata started. And eventually when I have the ponds, we will also have American water lily. All of three of those are anti-spasmodic, anti-anxiety, sedative. And they're all good at that. There was uh, another herb that I experimented with many, many moons ago. Jeez, when was this? Probably about 15 years ago. Called Kalalea Zacatechichi. That's that's the name. Kalalea Zacatechichi. It's yeah, this from Mexico. It's from, from Oaxaca. Oaxaca. O-A-X-A. 
extreme southern Mexico is where, is where it's native to. The, the common name for it is Aztec dream herb. It's an ethnobotanical, it's not a scheduled drug of any sort, it's not illegal. Uh, it's just kind of interesting. It has a mild hypnotic effect. The, the way the the way that the, the Aztecs would use it is they would make a tea out of the out of the plant and then they would make a, a cigarette out of the leaves and they would put it in a pipe and so they would drink the tea and they would smoke a little bit of the of the plant and then go to sleep and it would give them wonderful dreams well what I discovered is it's it's a hypnotic it puts you in a very suggestive state if you're plan planning on going to bed if you take this herb, you will almost immediately enter into REM sleep, which means that even if you only get a couple of hours of sleep or even as little as 30 minutes of sleep after having taken this herb, you will awake and feel refreshed, which is really quite remarkable. Um, I tried combining that with valerian with some limited success. Um, whenever I had fresh samples of the plant and was using it fresh, uh, it worked really well, but uh, I tried purchasing some uh, some already harvested Calilea, and they th the people that were harvesting didn't understand that you had to harvest it at the appropriate time, and as a result, it wasn't very medicinally active. So until I can I can get back to it and and get my own supply growing, I probably won't be making any of that particular medication. But um, I thought it was really quite remarkable. If you're one of those people that works a stressful job and you might get, you know, an hour for a power nap, <laughs> taking a, a little bit of this and, and going and laying down in your cubicle for, for half an hour will do wonders for the rest of your day. All right. Um, Jasper says, whoa, where are you getting Ma Hong? I miss that plant. Uh, I don't know if you can still get any. Uh, try Bouncing Bear Botanicals. That was where I found it the last time. As, as a cut and dried herb. Um, there are a couple of nurseries that still grow samples of ethnic botanicals and you can get samples of Mahong and uh, Ephedra viridian from those. That's actually where I, I found fresh Ephedra viridian once again, many, 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 many moons ago. If you're preparing this one and you were planning on adding that to something like this compound for additional enhancement of, of, of circulation, um, don't use aspirin. I know that's that's typical with, with the meathead uh, crowd is to use the Fedra, aspirin, and caffeine together. You could use caffeine. You could use, uh, say, a uh, green tea extract along with with mahong, but or the uh, the Fedra viridian. But if you're growing it, the uh, the, the ephedrine collects most in the highest concentrations in the joints. It's called the joint fern. It collects in the joints. So you clip just above, just below the joint. Take that little joint section and uh, either dry that and crush it and then use uh, your favorite extraction method to pull the, the ephedrine out and make a, a combination with that or uh, or not. It doesn't need it to be an effective treatment for, uh, for inflammation. Anyway. Ta-da! Jasper says, I used to work in a vitamin plant in Colorado Springs in the 90s. <laughs> 50 kilogram of all on this day of week. Uh, no, it really does. It, it, it works really well. You will be, if you've ever had experience with this wonderful plant, you'll be bright, bright eyed and bushy tailed, wide awake, and hardly any harmful side effects if you're not using some extract of the plant. If you're just using the herb as a tea and using it the way the way your uh, your herbalist would prescribe it to you, then it's not a problem. I imagine if you took the extract and started ingesting large amounts of the extract, you would wind up with heart palpitations and sweats and who knows what else. All right. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, every time man steps on nature's medicine, he brings out the devil. He brings the devil out of it. Yeah, that's 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 so true. Now, even right now with the um, cannabis market the way it is, people are making extracts and butters and oils and herbs and gummies and edibles, and the dosages are not the same. 
as it would be if you were using just the plant in its natural form. As a result, although to the best of my knowledge, you can't overdose on THC, people are getting a higher dosage than they are prepared for. And so it's, it, it causes some problems. To the best of my knowledge, we'll say you can't overdose on THC. But extracts make things much more difficult. All right. Let me see here. Hmm. Grabs big in the tinctures. Yeah. <laughs> you love whenever I look over my glasses. Hmm. Doing the wizard thing. Sasquatch Red says, I have a small copper still from Portugal. That's cool. At the moment, for people who are wondering about, about using stills and distillation of, of, of spirits, um, alcohol stills are legal in the United States with a permit from the ATF. The last time I checked, the rules may have changed. You get a permit from the ATF. It is free. But they, they, they want to do an inspection of the area where you're going to have the still set up to make sure it's not a not a safety hazard, basically. And then the, I believe the rules are you have to make your your ethanol for fuel purposes, not for drinking. Mm. Other than that, there's, they've, they've got rules. Rules, rules, rules. Um of course, the same kind of stills can be used for distilling essential oils, too. <laughs> Mark was expecting CBD extract or psilocybin. <laughs> we might have some fun whenever I, whenever I thread together, together a, a three-way anti-anxiety medication. That might raise a couple eyebrows. I just feel so relaxed and settled. Everything is good. <laughs> Amy says, if the family tells her that the bread needs needs salt, she's going to scream. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hang on a second. You've got to, you've got to, Mark, you got to get the beard right. Just like that. And, and then you'll, you'll see me walking around with, uh, with some sort of a, a, a cone, like a, like a, a corn cob in my hand. And, and I'll probably have a sickle in my, in my other hand, or maybe a handbag. That would be good. What do you think? Side profile? Maybe? Babylonian? No? Okay. All right. Uh, it's the hat. All right, Suzanne, Suzanne's text says, well, they're posting the ingredient list, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll post the ingredient list. I'll also tell you right now. We've got turmeric, two tablespoons. We've got Boswellia serrata, two tablespoons. This is Indian frankincense. Would any other kind of frankincense work? Yeah, probably. All right, we've got one tablespoon black pepper for the pepperine. We've got one tablespoon cassia cinnamon, not Ceylon cinnamon, cassia cinnamon. Ceylon cinnamon would probably work too. That'd be more expensive. And then we have the popular horny goat weed, Epimedium brevicornum, for nitric oxide production to stimulate blood flow to speed up the healing process. All right. Let me see. the garden said i had a guy trying to tell me not to grow fruit trees from seed because i don't know what i will get that's no well, that's that's one of those it, it, it it's a reason not to and it's a reason to grow from seed because you don't know what you're going to get i mean right now what do we have maybe a dozen different varieties of apples that's it for the malice genus dozen, dozen different varieties and that's all we got if you plant a fresh apple apple seed from a known variety that's possibly been cross-pollinated with something else, you don't know what you're going to get. You could get an apple that's worse. You could get an apple that's so much better. So 
graphs and clones are great if you want to know exactly what it is that you're going to be getting. Genetic reproduction is great for being able to come up with new varieties and strengthen the gene pool overall. You don't want to be suffering from genetic inbreeding depression, which is a very, very serious problem with a lot of commercially grown plants these days. They, they're, the gene pool is so limited that one small disease can just wipe out a cultivar. Joe Serrano is with us tonight. Hello, Joe. Let's see. You were on time, but God sent us a torrential downpour. Less than an hour and 23 minutes. Hmm. We almost got one. Just before just before I went, I went on, we had some, some thunder going on back over yonder. Shoot, we're into an hour already. Sasper Red says, we grew Calais here in Illinois, brought in and out every year. Yeah, it's it since it's, it's such an extreme southern plant, you you probably would have to to uh, to keep it in a, a nice large pot and move it in and out like a like a, a periodic periodically stored indoors tropical perennial. Mm. I grew it for a while, and about the time it was ready to start budding up, it, it died. And then we experimented with it and discovered it was really effective. It worked really well. All right, let me see here. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Bragging on me, dropping knowledge bombs. I just like researching new and interesting topics and then sharing what I've learned. That's, that's, that's really it. I do a lot of Google. <laughs> okay. Sastras Red says, Bouncing Bear no longer has Mahong or seeds. Wow. Okay. Red knows about this one. Strictly medicinal seeds had some seeds, but they go fast. Mormon tea doesn't have the same amounts of... Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it would. Mahong, uh, Mahong was always a, a better a better option. And incidentally, for, for people that are wondering, what do I do? What do I do? I need to use an EpiPen because I can suffer anaphylactic shock because I'm allergic to this, that, the other thing. And if something happens to our supply chains and we can't get epinephrine, what do we do? If you can get something like ephedrine or a plant that produces ephedrine, ephedrine stimulates production of epinephrine and norepinephrine, which is why it keeps you alert. It, it's actually causing your brain's own supply of, of, uh, of, of chemicals to kick into gear and start manufacturing. So there is a possibility that you might be able to save your life with that particular herb if that's the only thing you had available to you. All right. Amy is making sourdough bread, and she hasn't promised to bring me any. Man, I'll tell you what. Amy is also saying she's using willow bark to replace aspirin. I have another alternative for you. Um, you can also grow yarrow. Yarrow as a replacement for aspirin. It also contains salicin. And incidentally, it uh, looks like it contains the same um, uh, rooting hormone effects that willow has. The inner bark of the willow tree, you use that to produce a tea to soak your cuttings in before you put them into your potting medium to get them to root. Um, from all of the trials I've done so far trying to cut root yarrow cuttings, they root every bit as well as willow. In fact, they root a little bit better. I, I haven't lost a single yarrow cutting whenever I try to start one from cuttings. Anyway, so you can always use yarrow for a uh, for a sort a source for for your uh, salicylic acid. Okay, Sasper Stress says copper still is for essential, essential oils. I really need to get one. Suzanne say, is asking, are goji berries medicinal? I have them, but I find them bitter, hoping to have a good use for them. They are. They're, they're, they're bitter. They're just like eating a multivitamin. I've discovered. And uh, I think Melody was asking, from Baker Lake Homestead, was asking if I could get her any seeds. I could probably do you one better. Uh, whenever spring rolls back around, I'll get a few 
I'll get a few goji goji berry plants started. They take from cuttings really, really easy, and I'll I'll, sh I'll ship one up to you after I get it started. Uh, but for the most part, just treat them like like a multivitamin. Use use them as a, a vitamin supplement, but not as a main food source. And you'll be happy. <laughs> Family saying they need more salt in the bread. Oh, once you bake it in the bread, you don't notice it. You'd always just dust a little bit of, of, of powdered salt on the surface of the loaf whenever you're done, and, and, and maybe that'll make them happy. Mm -hmm. Inbreeding, depression, potato famine. John Pepper has mentioned the potato famine. Yeah. Joe says, years ago, I planted a ruby red grapefruit seed. I got white grapefruit and with a little bit of yellow. Or no, he got yellow grapefruit. Good grapefruit, bit sour, but nothing a little sugar camping. Well, all grapefruits are a little bit sour as far as I, I've been able to tell. Huh. Amy says, grew some peach seeds one year that crossed with a plum. Absolute best fruit ever. Shoot. I should send you some some air layering supplies and have you uh, see if you can if you can get the the peach plum hybrid uh, to to take as a as a cutting. That'd be awesome. Katie Moyer just got home from Missouri. Mark says he liked the goji berries. If you get them, if you get them at the at the right time, they're not quite so bad. You, they're, they're going to look right before they're ripe. I mean, they'll, they'll look kind of reddish orange uh, for a long, long time before they're fully ripe. But even when they're, even when they're at their, their, their full ripeness, they're, they're going to have a uh, kind of a vitamin or mineral aftertaste to them. <laughs> I'm not going to drive down to Oklahoma City for bread, Amy. <laughs> it needs salt. Uh, Kay's asking, does anyone know what happened with the food seeds in Lowe's and all the farm type stores? They pulled them in southern Illinois and southeast Missouri, and they don't know why. Mm -hmm. Maybe because they're old and they they want to cycle them out for the next for next year's product, or they 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 put them up for sale in seasons, or who knows, any number of reasons. Now is the time for cuttings. Yes, it is. I've been having a hard time with cuttings this year. I've been trying and trying and trying, and I've got a few things to take, and uh, not everything that you try takes. It's just, it's a numbers game. You stick cuttings, you stick cuttings, you stick cuttings, and eventually you're going to have some that, 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 that actually that actually make cuttings. All right, guys, we're getting late here, but before we go, we're going to open up a little bit of mail and see what Mary ordered up. All right, I have no idea what's in this box. It's very obviously from Amazon. I've I've been looking for one thing in particular, and hopefully, hopefully we'll have it in one of these boxes. All right, she got what is this? Waterless dog bath. Go figure. All right, and then we got a misting spray bottle. There we go. And this is a, a mist sprayer. Okay. This thing right here, Mary. This is the right one. There you go. I was talking with Mary about this, this particular product. Now, oh, you're not going to be able to see it really well. Darn it, Pooh. Let me pull it out of the box real quick. It's got a, uh, it's got a USB cord, so it's electric. All right, so this is... This is a uh, this is a mist sprayer. I'll get the, the instructions out for it. The idea is you put your you put your liquid in here after it's fully charged up, and you you hit the button and it produces an atomized mist. 
this is good for um, small amounts of essential oils that you want to produce in a mist that you can inhale. This, why is this important? Well, I'll tell you why it's important. It's probably not going to have it in these boxes, but I have coming a very important essential oil called oil of oregano. Oil of oregano is a little on the expensive side right now, uh, but it essentially is a concentrated essential oil containing the, the chemical compound thymol. Thymol is one of the four ingredients that you find as an active ingredient in the popular over-the-counter mouthwash Listerine that I've been very interested in the antiseptic properties of thymol for quite a while now. And I've been trying to, to find a good plant to grow here in northeastern Oklahoma that produces thymol in abundance. And so far, the one that I've found that works the best and lives the longest is bee balm. Bee balm has a lot of thymol in it. But if you, uh, if you can get oil of oregano, that works too. It's very concentrated thymol. The thymol, whenever you put it into something like an atomizer, and the way I've used it previously was to put it into a handkerchief. You soak the handkerchief with it and then breathe in through the handkerchief to suck in that essential oil in, in vapor form down into the lungs, across the trachea, down into the, into the air sacs of the lungs. So if you've got an upper respiratory tract infection that settled in your lungs and in your sinuses, in your throat, you could use an atomizer like this, or you could put it on cloth and inhale through the cloth to get that into your lungs. The thymol kills bacteria on contact. And short of having an effective course of antibiotics against uh, against uh, some of these upper respiratory tract infections, that's about all you can do is find something that you can inhale that will kill the bug. And thymol definitely, allegedly, allegedly works. <laughs> Remember, I'm not a licensed physician. Therefore, any medical advice that I have should be taken with a grain of salt. All right. So atomizer or uh, some other way of producing a very, very fine mist and something containing thymol. Oil of oregano is a good option for that. All right. Just in case you ever wind up in a situation where you can't just simply go to the doctor, get an effective antibiotic, either because they're not available or because the strain of uh, bacterium that has invaded your lungs is resistant to antibiotics, say a uh, methicillin-resistant form of bacteria, you can always resort to using something like thymol, oil of oregano, or any other thymol-containing herb. Get your essential oil out of there, atomize it, or horf it through a cloth <clears throat> to uh, use as a treatment. Of course, this is now in absence of modern medicine, last resort sort of thing. All right, so we've got a lot of we got a lot of uh, stuff for the medicine cabinet in this box here. Vitamin D3, these are uh, 2,000 international unit capsules. We, uh, we go through these quite a bit. We, I made a discovery, I'm going to say probably about 30 years now, that uh, if you increase your vitamin, D, your vitamin D intake dramatically, I mean dramatically by you know, two or 3,000 units a day during the winter months, you can eliminate seasonal affective disorder, the depression you get when the sky turns gray. Go figure. Vitamin D, who'd have thought? But it has an effect upon your mood. All right, we have some sort of uh, waterproof bandages. We've got some some various adhesive sutures. That's cool. Always happy to have more stuff to go on my surgical kit. What do we have here? What are these? Lavender scented wet wipes. Oh, isn't that nice? Another. Another half kilogram of green tea. Thanks. I will use it. Camellia sinensis. Remember that, that that show we did a while back about what the Latin names mean? Sinensis, if you ever see that, it means Chinese. Occidental means Western. Uh, and Canadensis means specifically North American. We've got some more of uh, that instant coffee that Mary likes in here. 
Oi, what else have I got? What else have I got? Oi, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got another box. I've got another box. Another box. What do we got? Oh my goodness. This is the most fun part of the show, right? What did Mary order this week? She says she's got some oil of oregano coming, but it probably will not be here today. Uh, she got some vitamin C plus zinc tablets. Although, personally, I've moved to using the uh, the vitamin C uh, powder crystals. Get them in one pound containers, and uh, those are awesome. I actually use them in cooking. Uh, I make a little uh, a little soup with a little bit of chicken bouillon. I throw in a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of garlic, uh, a little bit of diced onion, a shot of sriracha sauce, and a about a, a eighth of a teaspoonful of vitamin C powder, and lo and behold, it's hot sour soup. <laughs> it's, it's hot sour soup. Okay, Mary got herself some green tea, and we've got uh, it's like a little a little bottle of what is this one? Sesame oil. Nice. Not that we use sesame oil for any sort of medicinal purpose. It's just, it's nice in the wok. Whenever you're stir frying fresh, fresh vegetables from the garden, you use a little bit of sesame oil. It can handle the high temperatures. It's good stuff. All right, let me see here. All right. Ta -da. Let me see here. Amy says she's never air layered successfully. Just like cuttings, keep 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 cracking at it. Eventually, you'll get it. So far, the um, the air layers that I've started are they appear to be doing better than my cuttings. My cuttings of a pecan tree within a couple of days that start to wither and and dry up and turn into a dead twig. And it's been at least two weeks since I did that first air layer, and the branch is still nice and green at the end. So apparently, it's it's working the way it's intended. the The idea is okay. Whenever you're air layering, one thing that that, that may help absolutely 100% make sure your peat moss and your your potting medium makes full contact around around the cut around the cut surface. Oversaturated, too much water. And then squeeze the excess out whenever you're, whenever you're you're squeezing it in, in, in place around the cut, and then seal it off good. Make sure no light can get to it. Uh, if any light gets to it, then the roots probably won't grow. But between those those two, two or three little extra tips, good contact with your with your potting medium over over wet over wet over wet, and uh, no light at all. Uh, if you've got enough water in the potting medium, what is supposed to happen is, as the the end over here at the end where, where it's supposed to be forming a new tree, when it needs moisture, it'll pull it from the potting medium. And then the cut end over here on the branch will supply moisture. And hopefully you can you can keep the, the, the moisture going from the from the, the roots of the plant up through its island, through the through the, the cambium layer of the bark, out through past where the cut is, into the potting medium to keep it moistened so that you can always have moisture going to your to your cutting as it forms. All right. Yep, just do it. Keep on doing it. Eventually, you'll get it. That's that's about the only way. About the only way is just keep on keep on doing it and keep on doing it until you, until you until until it clicks. Uh, the best th best way to do cuttings and learn how to do cuttings that I've found so far is uh, start with sweet potatoes. Start with sweet potatoes. Grow 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 a sweet potato vine. And then practice keep taking cuttings from your sweet potato vine and rooting those, and you'll 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 have so much success rooting cuttings from sweet potato vines that eventually you'll go, okay, I've got this, <laughs> and you won't feel so bad whenever you don't get a cutting to take because sometimes you, they just won't. 
Sometimes they just don't. <clears throat> You'll know that it's not you. <laughs> we'll put it that way. All right. Susan's taking off. Thank you for the visit. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, ta -da, ta -da. Somebody was... All right. Katie's saying, starting early August, all seed companies, uh, the few flower seeds have left to some of the farms for 30 years. It's never happened like this. Very strange. Well, that and people maybe just be buying them all out. <laughs> Arkansas Woodcutter says, Star West Botanicals for bulk herbs. All right. I'll have to check those guys out. see yep, yep. yeah if they're out of seas where where you're at ask around we've, we've got a great gardening and homesteading community and uh just ask just about any of us if we've got extra seas are more than happy to share them it only costs a postage stamp and a little bit of time Ta -da. hey there is veteran iron and wood Veteran Iron and Wood. I subscribed to Veteran Iron and Wood's channel earlier this week. I, I went over there and had a look, and I noticed that uh, that he was in the midst of hand forging a firing lock for for a flint lock. <laughs> that kind of stuff is right up my alley. <laughs> I thought it was great, so I'm going to keep an eye on on the progress. Uh, hey, are you planning on uh, are you planning on on building a barrel too? You know, doing doing the uh, the weld, welding the strips together to, to to build a barrel the old fashioned way because that would be really cool if somebody was going to do that. All right. Hey, Wheat Project is with us tonight too. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, yeah, okay. So Veteran Ironwood is building the entire gun from scratch. That is awesome sauce. And you've already made the barrel. All right, I'm going to have to go back and look at, look at the videos so I can catch it. Uh, da, da, da. Mark's wanting a, a, a mixed variety of seed packs just this year, please. <laughs> All right, I've got a few things I can send you. I've got uh, what do I have? I've got some uh, some some really good sweet basil. I've got some uh, some more amaranth I can send your way. I've got a lot more amaranth I can send your way. If you'd like some of the red cannas, I'm I'm starting to harvest the seeds for those, so I'll have those that I can send out. Maybe a few other things. Um, no corn this year. Next year I'll have corn. I'm gonna I'm gonna grow enough that I can, I can I can afford to, to send out some this next year. I've got some of that bee bomb here, that I'm uh, I'm working with. Wow, that's been dead and dry. It's been dead and dry for a couple of weeks now, and it's still potent. I've got uh, I can send you some heirloom cayenne pepper seeds. Maybe a little bit of this and that and the other thing. All right. What for for uh, 10, 15 bucks for for a mixed seed pack? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I might just I might just find a find a stamp and send some to you. So you subbed and then wound up getting unsub well that happens most of the time if you can leave a comment on a video after after you make a subscription to some somebody the subscription will stick oh i would like to try the lakota the, the lakota squash again i tried the the few seeds that i had they started but then the the weird weather this year they didn't take off and grow so I'm gonna to have to try again on the on the squash. Anyway, guys, hey, eleven of you here, all, and it's we're shoot, we're at an hour and a half. Um, if you guys missed it, we made these anti-inflammatory gel caps tonight out of five anti-inflammatory herbal ingredients: turmeric, Indian frankincense, horny goatweed, cinnamon, and black pepper all together. 
that combination of herbs knocks out the inflammation and improves and enhances blood circulation and lowers blood pressure and has pain relieving properties. All of these are good things. <clears throat> Actually, I should say allegedly. Remember, I'm not a licensed physician. Any advice that I give you regarding medicine should not be considered genuine medical advice. I'm really offering it for um, entertainment purposes. There you go. <laughs> uh, the cinnamon that we're using tonight is, um, uh, this is cassia cinnamon. It's, it's the, the more common variety of cinnamon, not Ceylon cinnamon. All right. In any case, guys, it's been over an hour and a half. Well, it's been right about an hour and a half. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. As always, if you found the video informative or entertaining, you know what to do. And I'm holding my finger up and that's to my temple for way too long, aren't I? Hi, kitty. <laughs> I'll catch you next time. Good night. <laughs>